right guys, so we're here with the Yak again, working on our choke setup for the DA60. I've seen a couple posts on the internet about how people set up the choke on these. They're a little difficult because they're a rear carb. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, check it out, show you how I do it. There's a couple different ways. This way does not use a servo. I like that because it saves weight and a little less complexity in the setup of the plane. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, go through this. I'll give you some close-ups of the process and hopefully it helps you guys out. If you guys are liking these videos, please like and subscribe. Share our videos. We're trying to get to the two, uh, 2,000 subscriber mark. We're going to be uh, announcing something probably in the next couple weeks that we'll be doing to help uh, drive our, our uh, subscribership up a bit. So like I said, if you like these videos, like the content we're producing, please like, hit the bell for your notifications, and, and uh, be sure to subscribe. All right, let's get into this. All right, so here we are. Here's the DA60 mounted on the Yak. You look the carburetors back here this is the choke lever uh, it's a little tricky to get to here the front of the plane we come around here we take a little, little bit of a closer look and we have access to the side of the blazing star because of the angle it's at to come back here you can look you can see from inside the plane there's the carburetor itself we got a throttle linkage down below here got that all hooked up we'll do another video on setting up our our linkage there and our geometry and then this is like i said this is our choke here okay so let's uh, go ahead and take a closer look at how I set this up. All right, guys. So what I did here is I took a piece of 256 all thread rod and I have a Dubro switch set. We'll put links in the description here for this. This is the knob that comes on the end of the, of the switch. So you can mount switch inside and have this pull knob on the outside. Um, I made this G10 support here because 256 is a little flexible. So this will support the rod on the way out. I went ahead and drilled it and uh, C8 it to my engine box here, motor box. So now we put this in here, screw it in to that side a little bit. It's really long right now, so we'll be, we'll be working on this, uh, showing you how I'm gonna transfer. But anyway, so now you can see we've got a working choke rod. That's our choke on, choke off in. So how are we gonna transfer this over to our cowl? We've, uh, I showed you guys how to cut the cowl for the engine. We're gonna use a very similar process. We've got a piece of cardboard stock here that I've put a hole in for the 256 rod. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. Go ahead and get this up to our uh, ball length there that we have hooked up. I did drill and tap the th uh, choke rod, uh, lever for the nut there and put a nylock nut on the back just to make sure we have everything we need. So, in order to transfer this to the cowl, we're going to do just like we did with the, with the engine cutout, the motor cutout. Take a piece of tape here, blue painter's tape, you can get it at any hardware store, or really pretty much any store, I'm pretty sure they have it at Walmart, Target. I'm going to tape this in place here. Try not to put any pressure front or back. I like to make sure everything's pretty neutral there, so we're not pushing the rod one way or another. There we go, we got that nice and taped on. Now, we simply unscrew our threaded rod, like this. Take that off, set it aside. We'll bring our cowl in here. It might take me a minute to remember how we have this thing set to go on. Although, we don't have the ignition on right now, so it shouldn't be too tricky. Come on the other side here. get our cowl put on and we are going to want to put a couple screws in here guys just to make sure we're 100 percent lined up you only get one shot at this when you're cutting into a fiberglass cowl like this one screw in there put one screw on the other side just to make sure everything's locked up in place right go Go. We are now mounted. Now we've got the cowl on. We're going to use our trusty body reamer here from our Duratrax kit. Not putting pressure on it. Right in the center of that hole. Score it. There we go. Got our mark now. We can take this off. Now, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and enlarge that a little bit. 
I like to go just big enough to get the, the push rod through. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if we can thread it in. Probably not. find it there so the next step is going to be to take this off cowl off now that we have that located we do need to cut our 256 rod to a better length so we can slide this on with the rod on there maybe a little tricky we'll see how so we don't have much side to side room here Next thing I want to do is I do have a grommet that I'm going to I'm going to make this hole a little larger so I can put the grommet in that'll keep it from vibrating and wallowing out the hole on the cowl. Take this out nice and slow. This does a couple things. It actually also gives a little better visibility in, so we can probably. Got our nice little grommet on here, and as you can see, oh, you can't see because it it's too long. All right, so once you have your hole located on the cowl, you've got your grommet fitting right. Go ahead and take the grommet out. We're gonna slide the cowl on like we normally would. And we will have a little bit of resistance in some places because that rod is in there. And get everything lined up here. That all good to go. Oh, I'm gonna start lugs here. There we go, get a little pressure put on it. You'll, if you look down in here, you'll see that it is holding it up. Just use your a long tool to get it lined up there. There you go, wiggle it and get it in there. There we go. Flip your plane back over here. You'll see your choke is right here. We can get a screw, put our screw on. Now you don't want the, you don't want the ball to be quite so far in like that and that's why we tightened it on a little further than it needed to be when we were setting it up. Pull this out here, we'll unscrew it, five or so turns, slip our grommet over, Careful. work our grommet into place on the cowl here, Keep it all nice and neat there, still a little tight. I like to go out until I see a little bit of daylight here. It's not quite there yet. There we go. A little slop so I know vibration is not going to close my choke on me. Now we have a nice easy working choke. Anyways guys, hope this helped. Uh, like I said, it's tricky on these DA60s, anything rear carb. It's not necessarily something you can make a bit easier, but uh, you know, a little bit of work, you have a nice clean setup that doesn't draw a bunch of attention and you're ready to go to the field and fly. Hope this helped guys. Like I said, like and subscribe. 
give us a thumbs up throw uh, your comments down below what you think what you would do how you, how you've set up your choke setup on your da60 and uh we look forward to getting you some more content